Gentlemen, welcome back to the mess, which is my today, which is my de whatever desk. Uh, and today is a mail day, and up on our screen we have a Run Cam Owl Plus, and I reckon that's what we got in that package. So we're going to leave that one to last. So let's do the first one. Uh, what am I missing right now? I'm missing some of those magic marker pens for drawing on the quadcopters. They've been absolutely ages. So let's get the first package open. And um, what do we have in today's RC mail? Let's open it up. I need to go a bit careful, so I'm just going to check the package. Nothing in that one. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Today, we have a wink on our package. So it wasn't bang good sending me sad faces. Uh, in fact, oh, we got a bag inside of a bag. Hmm. Uh, in fact, what it was was the uh, local post office doing that just to identify that they were external packages. And did I really order that? Oh, I must have done. Okay. Uh, so first off, we have some Isheen, um, what should we call it, Velcro straps. And uh, like the ones which I ordered the other day, these ones are... Ooh, slightly longer. Now, let me just put these on the desk to measure them for you. Uh, total length is, I can't see, I need to do it from the other side of the desk. So from the center of the hole to the end is about 22 centimeters long. Uh, and you get about 12 and a half, maybe 13 centimeters worth of usable space. So yeah, happy days. Uh, and again, I'm going to be needing those for some of the builds which I've got going on here. And they were super cheap, so I bought a couple of packs. And yeah, different bag on those. Yeah, it looks the same. So yeah, I've got a couple which have turned up. Uh, by the way, as always, I will put links to all these products in the uh, video description. So let's go and put those to one side. Oh, look at those. Okay, now we got more in here. Oh, thanks guys. Right. I ordered two different types of these uh, horns because I didn't know which ones I actually wanted. So can you see those in the bag? Okay, those are much, much, well, they're different to the ones which I've been using before. It feels like nice and sturdy plastic uh, and they've got the pieces, the little uh, clamps. So that's a uh, the, that shaft there actually goes through, say, your ele elevon or your elevator or your aileron, uh, and then you clamp it down with the back there. And those ones are really nice and big. Happy days. Uh, and these ones are similar. Feels like a stronger plastic, but they also come with the, uh, uh, what should we call it, clevis, which, to be frankly honest, I won't use. But I will save the screw which comes with them because... That's a great emergency screw for a servo, okay? So yeah, I've got a collection of those. Uh, they were super cheap, like just a couple of quid. Um, happy days. And as you can see, I bought loads because I do get through loads of them. Oh, I also had, I don't know if I ordered one or two of these. I think I've only ordered one. Uh, they are the 3.17 millimeter prop adapter. So. The reason why I buy these is because some of the pusher motors which I use is that they come with the prop savers on and the prop savers are rubbish. So I always swap over to one of those. And what else we got in here? We have got, oh, I've just spotted something special, very special there. Uh, I've got some Futaba connectors as well. I was getting short of those uh, for doing servo lead extensions. Again, they would have been super cheap, uh, a pound, two pounds, something like that. And yay, new quadcopter frame, get in. I, as a heads up, I really do not like the QX90 quadcopter frame. It's too tight and you're having to cram everything in there. It's not a good frame. And I don't know which frame this is, uh, but I can already tell you, it looks better than the QX90. It's probably about the same size, but because it's got a second layer on top, and I'm having an issue getting her out of here. Come on, girl. There you come. There we go. There's the lid. Oh, we get nice. What looks... Oh, yeah. Um, it, I'm not too sure if it's aluminium. I guess it would be because... Uh, they've been ionized it with, um, is that the correct term for it? I don't know. 
Uh, they've been and got a color on it uh, on the actual metal. So yeah, some diddy little screws. Um, yeah, nice parts there. And it comes with the grommets as well. And one of them's got himself stuck in there. And yeah, the reason why I prefer this kind of frame compared to the QX90 uh, is because you can get your FPV camera up and mounted underneath the front. You've got loads of space, not only for your receiver, but also the flight control board. And yeah, it does mean that you may need to extend the uh, power lines for the motors themselves. But with that extra bit of space, which you get, it gives you much, much more options. So for example, if I got, yeah, I have, is that in that main body, I would easily get the flight control board, the receiver, and on the top, I would, there's plenty of room up there for me to fit the battery on the top. So these micro quadcopter frames, there is a difference in them, uh, and it come, just basically boils down to space. Uh, so yeah, QX90 frame, don't rate it at all, don't waste your money on it buy a decent size frame uh, and yeah nice thick frame and again I'm thinking with that mounted on the top uh, that will definitely stiffen her up as well uh, nice thick arms as well but to be honest there are limits on these frames and when I smashed my previous frame uh, in, uh, the whole quad into a wall at full chat it didn't stand a chance so it looks about two mil thick something like that uh, it looks like carbon fiber and yeah, it sounds like carbon fiber as well. So yeah, happy days, happy days. I will go and get that quadcopter out of that QX90 frame. I'll save that frame for emergencies, but I will be port into that one because it gives me more room uh, and yeah, it just makes it easier flying because I really don't like that QX90 frame. The props are, are hitting the sides and things like that. So that was that bag. This one feels like we got two packages in here and again I wonder if it's those painting pens which I bought no it's not what have we got in here just check in the bag sticky label to stick on the wife haha <laughs> uh, pink shrink tube yeah you can never now have enough of this stuff so let's get this open uh, I think this was about again about three quid something like that lots and lots of different sizes feels nice and rubbery or spongy yeah lots of different sizes lots of different colors and it actually a really nice thing it comes in separated bags so uh, it means that in the box which i use to put all my heat shrinks in i can put these in and i can put them in the right sizes so yeah happy days and while i was buying the multicolored stuff i also bought a bag of assorted uh, sizes of the heat shrink tube as well just in black and yeah the thicker sizes I get through really really quickly because I wrap them around the top of the battery connectors in fact let me just show you a moment I'm sure I've got one or two here somewhere yeah it's actually on the battery charger and uh, I am trying to get to do all my batteries as well over time well now I've got some extra that's happy days but see that that's what I've been doing to my battery connectors uh, and then just a little dab of hot glue down inside of there and then it's a much bigger area for me to grab hold of uh, when charging batteries or just unplugging them uh, and yeah I, I just always worry about the uh, the stress being put on the actual connector inside here so yeah a little bit of extra hint shrink tube definitely do put a spot of hot glue down the middle and the reason why you want that is because otherwise it does that. And I only look, I need to go and change that one. So I'll be using my little hot glue gun, which is absolutely brilliant. I love that little thing. Um, and I'll get a bit of dab of hot glue down the middle uh, and then it will never pull away then. But it just gives you like a bigger uh, finger and thumb grip when you're, especially on your battery charger, uh, when you plug in batteries in all the time, is that I know that those two joints aren't getting as stressed as maybe as what they would have been. So yeah, I need to, in fact, I'll leave that over there with a hot glue gun and get that done shortly. Right, so some heat shrink, some connectors, a, a quadcopter frame which needs to get to put to one side and some Velcro strips and also some doodads uh, for the frames. So that leaves us with the last one, which is, come on. Yay, it is a run cam. 
get this open. Right, I bought this just because of the reviews which I'd seen for this one. So if you've never seen one of these Runcam products before, the quality on them is absolutely amazing. The Runcam Swift is an absolutely amazing FPV camera. It's not cheap at about 30 quid. And this one right now is 40 pounds uh, in British pesos. So what's that in USD? Give me a second, USD, save. Yeah, $50, it ain't cheap uh, by any means. And um, by the way, Banggood was the, one of the cheapest sites for the Runcam Owl, especially if you consider it includes free shipping. Also, a uh, little heads up, I always go for the orange cameras because if it does get ejected by the model in a unscheduled landing, is that you do stand a chance of finding it. So I'll put a link to this camera underneath this video. I already know that it's gonna be amazeballs. So there's the support tab. I've never had to use their support, uh, but apparently it's absolutely fantastic. We got a little specification sheet uh, in there. And by the way, I chose orange and PAL. That was my suggestion. And look at the Lux sensitivity on it. 0 0.0001 Lux, field of view 150. So quite a wide field of view. And the reason why I chose this camera is because it's now autumn here in the United Kingdom. And what's over the next couple of months, we're gonna start entering winter. Uh, and the, the video footage I've seen of this camera and the other owl cam is that the guys are out there flying around in what is pitch dark and they're flying around in full color. It's nuts, nuts. And oh, I got two shot with confidence uh, thingies in here. So let's have a look and get this one open. Whoa, look at the size of the lens on that. That is the biggest lens I've got on any of my FPV cameras. Uh, and you can also tell it's large. I don't know if you can see that right down in there. The actual lens in the middle is massive. Now there is a funny mark on the front. I'm just gonna rub that on my yeah, it's come off. It was just, uh, it must have been from where the, the lens cap was on it for a long period of time. So yeah, happy days with that. Uh, on the back, it's really simple to connect them up. Uh, it will support anywhere between five to 22 volts. So what's that? Uh, 2S to um, four, five S, something like that. Uh, crazy. And also you get these extra connectors on here and that's for the on-screen display. So in this box, we'll have uh, a little clicker thing which we can plug in and change the settings for the run cam. And I always keep my little on-screen display little cable with me uh, with the fat sharks. And the reason for that is because I do need to change the settings. Changing them is super, super easy. You just plug the cable in there, uh, rip, uh, apply the power, and then you can change all the settings using the joystick uh, via your FPV goggles. So yeah, happy days. And again, nice metal case and so not a plastic one. Lovely bit of foam. As we know, we always keep that because it comes in useful with models. What else do we get in the box? Uh, we've got a, by the looks of it, a vertical mount for maybe hanging it up that way round or maybe that way round. Personally, I won't be using that. I will end up using the metal mount. Oh, and the other cool thing about uh, Runcam is that, let me shake that around so you can at least see it is that you'll notice this mount here is got the uh, got the lugs on it for the metal frame, the, the actual holding device. Whereas the, if you're not using that, what you can do is change the back on it just undoing two screws uh, and change the back over so it will fit in a tighter space. So yeah, you're gonna save like a gram by taking the one off, but the reason why you would want this back plate over that one is that that one doesn't have the lugs on it. But if you didn't want the lugs on it, then happy days, uh, you could swap them over. So yeah, really, really cool. Nice mounting hardware, all the little screws you would need. Jobs are good and I do like the accessories. And what else do we receive in here? Oh, we've got straight out lead uh, for maybe, I, I don't, in fact, I don't know why they even bother including that to be honest, uh, which is the AV out lead but the lead which we are after. So there's one power lead, and that's the one 
So it's that lead there which you would include on your model. Oh, and by the way, there is a diode in here which stops you powering up these the wrong way round. I know it, uh, it protected me on five volts. I don't know above that, but that was a nice, real, really nice touch, especially on the Runcam Swift, where I, I put the positive and negative the wrong way round, silly Matt, uh, and it didn't kill it. So I would assume the Runcam Owl Plus has exactly the same. So to be honest, I would have liked to have seen a second lead come with this. And the reason for that is that I don't just run one model. There's chances because this is a premium camera. Chances are I will use this camera in more than one model. Okay, obviously not at the same time, but the chances are very high that I'll end up using this in more, one, more than one model. So a second lead, guys, would have been really, really helpful. But saying that, it wouldn't be too hard to chop up this cable uh, and then just pop on some connectors because I had some of those delivered today. Okay, so not the end of the world, I just lop off those and yeah, that would work a treat. So I would have to lop it off just before it reaches that little compression block there. So yeah, maybe we already do have a spare one. But anyway, getting to my point uh, is that you do get this extra device which comes with uh, the run cams and let me just spread that out and straighten that out a touch. Uh, and it's just a straightforward little joystick. So up, down, right, left, and you can click down on the top of it as well to make your selection. And then that will then fit on the back. So you do always do need to check these on screen display, ground and red. And then that then fits, he says, let me just do that off camera mo. Come on girl, in you go, yeah, there you go. Uh, and that fits in the left connector uh, so that you can then change the settings on this camera. And to be honest, most of the time I do find that I brighten up the image on these. But this one, very much an unknown. Uh, all I know that it's a very, very good FPV camera. The geez, it cost enough, so you would expect it to be that good. But yeah, I don't know which model this one's designated for just yet. Uh, do I put it on the little Hornet wing? I don't know. Uh, yeah, bit of a bit of an odd one at the moment. Uh, I will be testing this out as soon as I can, so look out for some video footage on this one shortly. Uh, but I can tell you, it is amazeballs. And also, because the dark nights are getting darker quicker here, the chances of me needing something like this is going to become more and more important. Now, obviously, uh, if you're in the southern hemisphere, then your summer is coming around. So if you did want to fly at night, check out the Runcam Owl Plus or the other Runcam uh, Owl. I'll put a link to both of these in the video description for you, uh, especially if you want to fly at night because the, the FPV guys out there, they are flying their quads and their models at night in full color using these cameras. Absolutely amazeballs. So happy days, bit of a nice haul today. Uh, I'm super chuffed that I got the Runcam Owl. Uh, I'm going to definitely go and have a play with that in a minute. I do need to get the hot glue gun going uh, to do that lead. Uh, and I've also got a new quadcopter frame, which is really handy because I've burnt yet another motor out on my micro quad uh, because I do run it on 2S. I like my models to fly fast and hard. So, oh well. Like I said, motors on a micro quad, they are definitely consumables. Uh, links to all of these parts, oh, and both versions of the Runcam Owl, I will put in the video description for you. Uh, obviously, any questions about any of the parts which turned up today, they're here in front of me. Remember, I bought these out of my own pocket, uh, so I will give you, if you ask me a question, what do I think of this heat shrink, uh, and it's crap, I will tell you if it's crap. Okay, so any questions, uh, just ask in the comments section underneath this video. And with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, for myself, Matt, cheerios.